In February, not only did we get a wealth of info on some new Pokemon games that are on the horizon, we also got a full 50 minute Nintendo Direct. A real Direct from Nintendo! It's like those things don't even exist anymore, but bam, here it comes! We mostly learned about a chunk of games that are coming out in the early half of this year, and some of them are coming out pretty soon. And by soon, I mean March. A lot of games are coming out in March now. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life, and today we're going to be showing you 14 games releasing on the Nintendo Switch in the month of March that we think might be worth your playtime. Now as for me, I'm still going to be playing Pokemon Blue on my Game Boy Color because it's the year 2021 and it's a lot of fun. Everyone knows at least one person who is afraid of spiders. I, for one, dressed up in a snowsuit to protect myself from a spider that was crawling near my bed when I was like eight years old. Don't shame me. So if you're like me, then Kill It With Fire could either bring you some relief or just loads of stress. Launching on the 4th of March, this is a first person shooter where you're set up in a room all by yourself. Well. I, I guess you're not entirely alone, as your objective is to find any spiders in the room and kill them with whatever means you have. You can shoot them with a shotgun, crush them with a book, blow them up with dynamite, just do whatever it takes to survive. It looks like the game is sort of going to be mission based, like in a game like Super Hot or Mr. Mosquito. Yeah, that's a deep cut. I wonder though if there will be a pacifist mode where you can, you know, sort of catch spiders in a jar and release them outside. You know, that's like real life hard mode. Also launching on the 4th is a new game that's heavily inspired by Undertale, but still looks like it has a lot of its own unique character. Everhood puts you in the shoes of a wooden doll who's on the hunt for their missing arms in a strange land full of surprises. The game shares some similarities with an RPG, but incorporates a rhythmic battle system where you dodge attacks on a guitar hero-like grid. Every inch of this game I've seen so far is dripping with color, sass, and charm. We have a lot of games to talk about on this list still, but being an Undertale fan myself, this is easily one of my most anticipated games of the month. One more title for the fourth is an adventure from the PlayStation-focused studio Quantic Dream, with Sea of Solitude, the director's cut. This emotional-looking tale follows a woman named Kay, who's been turned into a monster and must search the seas for the answers to change herself back. If you're a fan of games like Grease and Life is Strange, this might be a game to look out for. Anyone who's played Sea of Solitude on other platforms may be happy to hear that this new Switch version of the game brings over gyro controls, a photo mode, some new dialogue and a few more features too. After a few delays, which you'll hear no complaints from us about, we're happy to share that Apex Legends is officially coming to Switch on March 9th. This free-to-play FPS battle royale has already amassed quite a huge following on other platforms, so we imagine many of you are curious to give it a go. Alex, John, and I were all a little hard on it when we first saw gameplay during the Nintendo Direct, the most recent one, you know, the Direct. But it appears that Panic Button, the team behind Doom on Switch, actually ported this game over to Switch. So as long as it's running smooth, that's what matters most. Only a little while longer though until we can find out for ourselves. He still isn't in Smash, but on the 11th, Crash is bringing his latest adventure over to Switch with Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. Most next-gen ports to Switch usually see quite a visual downgrade, but this time around, the art team completely reworked the visuals to make this all happen, which kind of gives it almost a cel-shaded look. It reminds me a lot of when we'd see this happen during the days of the PlayStation 3 and the Wii, or even the PS2. Activision is also saying we can expect to see this run at 1080p docked and 720p in handheld at both 30fps, unlike the Insane Trilogy, which suffered quite a bit in the graphical department. I personally haven't played a classic Crash game in years, except for the tiny bit of the Insane Trilogy I played on Switch, but I keep hearing such great things about Crash Bandicoot 4 from my friends. Maybe it's finally about time for me to give Crash Bandicoot another chance. Thank you, thank you, you're so kind. 
Then if we skip ahead to the 16th, we're being treated to the port of a classic PS3 era RPG, Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning. Yeah, that's really the title. This single player action RPG was praised heavily back in the day for its deep character customization, progression system, and its story. But we're curious to see how well it all holds up in the modern age, as it's been almost 10 years, if you can believe it, since it was first released. If you're looking for a new fantasy adventure to sink your teeth into, this could be it. For the longest time, Stubbs the Zombie was an Xbox console exclusive, but that all changes on the 16th as it's now coming to Switch. You play as Stubbs the Zombie, a rebel without a pulse, who's on the hunt for brains, brains, and as you guessed, more brains. This is a third person action game where you can hurl your guts at enemies like a bomb, you can bowl your head across the street, and can take control of a tank. Because as John made Alex and I both aware, and plenty of you, this game uses the same engine that Halo Combat Evolved ran on. This is also made by the same team that made Guilty Party on the Wii, which was a Disney title. How do you go from that to this? If you ever need to explain the definition of a cult classic to someone, Stubbs the Zombie is a great example. Don't go in expecting more than an original Xbox era game could offer, and you'll probably have a good time. Then on the 18th comes a new puzzle platformer by the name of Minute of Islands. Right off the bat, this game is a feast for the eyes. It has almost a darker Adventure Time look to it, sort of like a comic book. Not only do the visuals play an important role, but so does the story. You play as a character named Mo, who's on a dangerous quest to bring her world back to life. You'll journey across the lands on your rickety boat in search of new islands with puzzles around every corner. It's not often we see a fully illustrated adventure like this, at this scale, so we're really looking forward to this one. We're still pretty surprised by the fact the standard Plants vs. Zombies experience still has yet to hit the Switch, but this is a step in the right direction. On the 18th, Switch owners can finally play the third-person Garden Warfare spin-off Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville Complete Edition. This kid-friendly shooter has you duking it out as crazy-looking plants and zombies for the right to rule the streets. If you've grown tired of the current shooters on Switch or want to introduce your kids to something other than Fortnite, this could be a solid alternative. We'll just have to wait and see how it actually performs on Switch. Also launching on the 19th is Root Film, a visual novel style adventure somewhat like Phoenix Wright. You play the role of a director who discovers a murder during a scouting assignment for a big TV show reboot that you're working on. Of course, the TV show you're trying to shoot happens to be mystery themed as well, so this pulls in your curiosity and thus the story and the mystery begins. You'll track down suspects, find clues, and do your best to get to the bottom of things, because so what if you're not a cop? So what if you're not even a detective? Detective. It's a video game. So if the newly announced Famicom Detective Club has you intrigued, this could tide you over well until then. The Story of Seasons series is basically classic Harvest Moon, but rebranded, and it's back with a new adventure on Switch come the 23rd, with Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town. Never in a million years would we have ever thought a farming simulator would have us hooked, but here we are. I'm just gonna play another day. I'm gonna check on my cows, give Celia some flowers, and then I'll go to bed. I'll go to bed. It's hard not to fall into the hook of checking on your animals, waiting for your crops to grow, and making friends with the townsfolk, and building an in-game relationship with that special someone. Animal Crossing fans know what it's like to dedicate an entire chunk of your life to a game. And the Story of Seasons series is no stranger to this pattern. So if you're looking for a new game to whisk you away, take up all your free time. Stay tuned, as we're sure to cover this game more before its release. On the 25th comes a new hack and slash adventure called Bladed Fury. This one is very reminiscent of games from Vanillaware, the team behind Muramasa and Odin Sphere. The game promises a deep story, a heavy combo system, and intense action. And what else can you really want from a game like this? We're just keeping our fingers crossed that it's a winner.
Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD released on Switch a few years ago, and while it somewhat scratched that itch with its new play controls that were much better than the original Wii version's motion controls, the challenge still wasn't the same. But on the 25th, a game called Paperball Deluxe is looking to fill the void. It may not feature cute and cuddly monkeys, but the gameplay is 100% there. This could be the true successor to Monkey Ball that we've all been waiting for, and we're so glad that it's coming to Switch. Bale and Wonderworld is launching on Switch on the 26th, and boy, do we really wish it wasn't. Consider this more as a public service announcement. We don't want this game to suffer, but we really want it to have more time in the oven. So far, we've only played the demo, and the worlds are bright and colorful, the characters are wacky, and are fueled by the creative charm found in the Dreamcast era of Sega. But it just isn't fun to play. The costume system is flawed, as each one of them has only one action. The graphics are a mess, movement is a chore, and for a platformer, that's a big complaint. A friend of mine put it really well, that this feels like a prototype for a game that got canned during the days of the GameCube. And if that was the case, we probably all would be extremely excited about this. But it's not. Square Enix, if you're listening to this for some reason, please consider putting this game back in the oven for another six months, because as it stands, this is not looking good. Of course though, if you're not convinced and you still want to give it a shot, the demo is still available on the eShop, so go take a look for yourself. We hope you have fun, but we just didn't. And to end everything on a potentially high note is the latest entry in the Behemoth Slaying series, Monster Hunter Rise on the 26th. This action adventure title allows up to four players to team up to take down some incredibly massive monsters. This time, however, you're given a few new tools to make things interesting, like the wire bug, a grappling hook that lets you swing around the world with ease. And you'll also have your own canine companion to sprint around with too. I've personally been wanting a chance to get into this series forever. I tried playing Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate on 3DS and I didn't have a group to play with, so I fell off pretty quick. So I'm hoping that Monster Hunter Rise is the game that pulls me into the series, and I'm imagining that I'm not the only one out there that feels like this. And there you have it, just a, a big old handful that it's gonna be hard to carry all those games with, with just two hands, but a, a lot of games coming to the Nintendo Switch in the month of March. It's also worth mentioning that Super Mario 3D All-Stars, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, the NES download version, and Super Mario 35 are all getting pulled from the Nintendo Switch eShop on March 31st. I don't want to say it's evil, but I'm going to say it's pretty close. There's no reason that this is good for the consumer. It just rushes you to go buy these games. I don't even want to tell you that you should go out and quick, you know, pick the pick this up at the store before you can never find it again or, you know, digitally download it. It's just it's just not fair. It's just not cool. They're doing the Disney thing. I, I'm gonna go off on a tangent if I'm not careful. We have tons of videos discussing this topic already. Please go check them out. We'll leave a link in the description down below. I almost don't even wanna tell you to go digitally download this because I don't want you to support this idea, but I already bought it. If you want it, go buy it. If you don't, whatever. It'll probably come back at some point because it's Nintendo. But of course, now's the time for you to let us know in the comments down below what you're most excited to get your hands on in the month of March. Or let us know if there's anything that you think we did dirty by forgetting it and not putting it on this list. Let us know so that way other people can find out about these cool games that you're excited for. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this, then why don't you go ahead and prove, just tell that subscribe button how much you appreciate it by giving it a good old click. Make sure you're subscribed because otherwise it could disappear on March 31st and then you'll never have a chance to subscribe to our channel until we tell you you can again. And then ring that notification bell to be one of the first people to see our videos whenever they go up. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm ZM from Nintendo Life. I hope you learned something new about a game that you may be interested in now that you didn't know already existed. Stay safe out there and we will see you next time. Oh, what?